Everybody soon get old and lonely. Come out, party people. Live like there's no tomorrow. Before Tommy Lee Sparter brought dark imagery to dancehall, breaking onto the scene as the genre's first goth. Chat like you are man food of you My missing one of me demon girl from Sparta Come suck up your cock and murder you Before Uncle Demon dropped songs like Spartan Soldier, Grim Rim Rave and Soul Reaper Before receiving shout outs from the likes of Usain Bolt Working with Vibes Cartel and Gaza Slim Beefing with Bounty Killer and feuding with Gage and Alkaline at the same time I would want to ask you, uh, you know, which one of them you see as your most Worthy opponent. Eh? Me not nah, nah violate them because artists them still, isn't me? They have their thing, they have their little lyrics. Well, music insiders who know the man tend to say that Tommy Lee Sparta is a super nice guy. He's been incredibly controversial for his dark uncle demon persona and gothic style. So much so that he had to tell Fader back in 2012. I'm not a demon and I now worship the devil and them tings. The music business is just an evil business. None of us are perfect. I'm not trying to do his accent or anything like that. That's actually how Fader transcribed the interview. So I just read it word for word. But his past, it gives us some clues about his aesthetic choices. Tommy Lee Sparta lost his father at a young age and was first inspired to write music at his grandfather's vigil. As he developed as an artist, he fathered his first child at just 14 years old, dropped out of high school two years later, and found himself literally scavenging to put food on the table for his growing family. What's going on guys? My name's Michael McGrudden, documenting the life and career of Tommy Lee Sparta prior to fame, here for you up before they're famous. Now I've covered Vibes Cartel, Movado, Alkaline, and Pop Con in the past, but there's one dude on Instagram known as 300 Spartan Soldier who just won't leave me alone. He requests this video every day, so I finally am getting it done. I dedicate it to you, buddy. Now let me know who's next in the comments down below. Music chose me, man. So a long time uh, doing music. My family, my grandfather, my granduncle, they play violin and guitar. Tommy Lee Sparta was born Leroy Jr. Russell on November 4th, 1987 and grew up in the Flankers community in Montego Bay. He grew up with five siblings but his childhood was difficult as he lost his father when he was just nine years old. He said of his family, Mai just come out hardcore alone. One brother is a soldier, another sister is a Christian, one brother is a manager at a hotel. Leroy grew up in a musical home. His grandfather and great uncles had a band that would often play traditional Jamaican wakes. When that grandfather passed away, young Leroy attended the vigil, and it was there that he was inspired to pen his first lyrics. Apparently, music wasn't the only thing Leroy was getting into from a young age. He fathered his first child when he was just 14 years young. He tried to balance his music, fatherhood, and his studies while attending Anchovy High School, but while he was in the 10th grade, he would drop out of school after discovering that his 11th grade girlfriend was expecting to give him a second child. His mother then allowed his pregnant girlfriend to move into the family home, presumably to prevent her young son from knocking up any more chicks. But that wouldn't exactly work. As of June 2016, he's fathered a total of eight children. Still years away from making a name for himself in the music industry, Leroy started hustling on the streets and picked up work on a construction site. But this wasn't enough to make ends meet, so to feed his family he turned to the sea catching fish, shrimp and conch. He would also climb breadfruit and ackee trees. He told the Jamaican star, you know ackee grow my kids them when them younger, my no ramp feed, feed them ackee, ackee tree a bowl a daytime. While still struggling to literally put food on the table, Leroy continued to have a passion for music. He began DJing at Sniper Studios in late 2008 and recorded his first song, Spartan Story. Sparta, Sparta, out at night. Fuck around me, take your life. Mother, mother, bond your belly boy. Leroy donned the stage name Tommy Lee, which would eventually be changed to Tommy Lee Sparta, so he wouldn't get confused with the Motley Crue drummer, who was hooking up with Britney Furlong. Still music was just a hobby for him, he didn't consider the possibility of being a professional musician even when he began performing as the opening act for local shows and receiving warm responses from the crowd. He even opened for Vibes Cartel on a number of occasions. Eventually Vibes would invite Tommy Lee to move out to Kingston with him and join his musical collective, Portmore Empire, but Leroy was reluctant to leave his home and growing family so he turned down the offer, at least at first. 
Tommy Lee Sparta was later invited to perform at Vibes Cartel's birthday batch in January of 2010. And it was then that he accepted the offer to become a member of Five Cartel's crew. His first underground hit with the Portmore Empire would be Warn Dem, released in November of that year. A bigger hit would follow with Some Boy, released in 2011. The song was not a smash hit out the gate, but after the arrest of his mentor, Vibes Cartel, and the release of the song's music video, things began to turn around. As the song began to generate a buzz for Tommy Lee throughout 2012, he released a total of five EPs and heavy hitting follow up singles like Shook, Bussa Blank, and Psycho. In the summer of 2012, Tommy Lee Sparta's music was everywhere, and he would headline both the Reggae Sum Fest in Montego Bay and the Sting Music Festival in Portmore. While Vibes Cartel's ongoing legal issues led to the shutdown of his label, at DJ Heem Records, Tommy Lee teamed up with Gaza Slim to start a new label called PG-13, which they ran until Vibes was released from jail. Now, one of the most prominent members of the Gaza camp, it wouldn't be long before he would be feuding with Gully. Alliance leader Bounty Killer took to Twitter on September 8, 2012, writing this. Christmas is for Christ, so no demon or devil see a win we blood clot, all damn a dead sting. Many saw this as a direct reference to Tommy Lee Sparta and a threat regarding his upcoming Sting Music Festival performance on Boxing Day. But Bounty Killer denied this, claiming it was just an innocent message against the devil. Tommy Lee Sparta said he would overlook the slight out of respect for his dance hall elder. Then, just one week later, he released a diss track and music video aimed at Bounty Killer called Goat Head. But the world don't know you before Boy you come and pull back to your legation Remember you do a video with the naked man Can I remember that? Bounty Killer responded with two diss tracks of his own and the two were slated to clash at the upcoming Sting Music Festival. But then, after the festival's lead promoter implied that Tommy Lee Sparta might have a chance of beating the veteran artist, Bounty Killer cancelled the performance. During the festival, Tommy Lee Sparta then expressed respect for Bounty Killer, and both artists have since stated they consider the beef to be over. Throughout 2013, Tommy Lee Sparta would release two LPs, Uncle Demon and Sparta Boss, as well as EP Save Them Soul, Bun No No, and Spartan Soldier. Dream would follow in 2014, with Big Bike and Rebirth dropping in 2015. As for the rest of the story, well that's pretty much it because this is before they're famous. My name is Mike McCred and we make all sorts of celebrity bios here on this channel. Be sure to browse around, hit subscribe, check out our other videos on similar artists. I'll see you guys in the next one. Boom! So to feed his family, he turned to the sea catching fish, shrimp, and cooch. Fuck is a cooch? I never heard of that. Oh, that's it.